Good morning everyone and greetings from India. I am Dr. Biju Soman talking from Kerala, India. From the gate map in the slide, you can locate that Kerala is in the southwest corner of India. I am talking from Trivandrum, the capital of Kerala. It is not marked in the map, but believe me, it is in the extreme south corner of Kerala. The background is the picture of a historic landmark in Kerala, the Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple and the Temple Pond. And I am glad to participate in this virtual conference and share some of our experience with the piloting of awards in Kerala. I am working in a public health institute attached to Sri Chitra Institute for Medical Sciences and Technology, which is an autonomous institute with the status of a university under the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. Our institute is very unique in the sense that uh, it has a technology wing, a super specialty hospital and a public health wing. And the main mandate of our institute is to develop technology for healthcare and for public health. This will be the overview of my presentation. I'll be talking on Bitone Healthcare in India in order to bring in the context and on the status of public health education in India and about one of the innovative modules which we have introduced into our Master of Public Health program that is the Public Health Technologies module and on our field practice area where we plan to do this evals and the work we have already done and on our future plans. India is a vast country with loads of people. In fact, we have substantial numbers of people of all major religions in the world, people of different ethnicities, living in different terrains, speaking different languages, worshipping many deities and gods. This sort of cultural diversity is evident even within states and provinces and its implications are more conspicuous in healthcare. There are many rich, filthy rich people in India living alone with loads of extremely poor people, especially in the interior, rural, tribal areas, urban slums and along the coastal belt. However, underneath these apparent differences, a code of spirituality lies across all sessions of people in India and this is what binds us together as a nation. Our economy is still growing despite the global economic slowdown. Unfortunately, its benefits are not reaching down to the people in their need. Roughly 70% of our doctors and most of the hospital beds are located in urban areas whereas vast majority of our people live in rural interiors. And for the unfortunate ones who live in urban slums, although they are close to health amenities, often they do not have financial or functional access to these facilities. This is a major public health issue in India. There is no denying that this warrants drastic structural, social and political changes. But that is going to be a very long ordeal and we the public health activists can't wait that long. The question here is whether technology can offer some interim measures to address this issue of unfair distribution of healthcare amenities including healthcare human resources. Let's look at the health indicators across different regions in India. Infant mortality rate is 12 per thousand live birth in Kerala in the southern side whereas it is highest high as 67 per thousand live birth in central India in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Similarly, maternal mortality ratio is 81 per 100,000 live birth in Kerala whereas it is as high as 261 per 100,000 live birth in central India. Healthcare utilization rates which are the positive indicators in terms of health services also show a similar trend. For example, almost all deliveries are attended by skilled birth attendants in India whereas only less than 30 percentage of the deliveries are attended by skilled birth attendants in the East Chain region in Jharkhand. The reasons for these disparities could be many like the very terrain and climate, positive social and political histories, social and community empowerment initiatives which have been going on for a long time in some of these states. Social researchers have highlighted that provision of basic amenities like food, water, shelter and education, especially female functional literacy are the prerequisites to uplift any community in India. From this table, it is evident that in terms of healthcare indicators, the state of Kerala is far ahead of many other major states in India. It is envisaged that the present day public health issues of Kerala 
could be confronted by many more states in India in the immediate future. The major public health issues in present-day Kerala are the emergence of non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, etc. Increase in outbreaks of emerging and re-emerging infectious entities. This is because Kerala is thickly populated and undergoing an epidemiological shift from endemicity to non-endemicity for many major infectious diseases. So Kerala is bound to get more and more outbreaks of infectious diseases in this period. Social health issues and issues of urbanization are another major category. As it is true with the leapfrog phenomenon in informatics, if we can find practical solutions to the present day public health issues in Kerala, it will help many Indian states to totally avoid these issues in their progression to development rather than going through the perils of the torch bearer. Now let us look at how far the public health profession in India is capable of adapting advances in other disciplines into its armamentarium. Public health education in India has traditionally been highly medical oriented. It was considered a post-graduation option for medical professionals offered by community medicine departments of medical schools in India. At the Menon Centre for Health Science Studies, the public health wing of our institute was the first to offer Master of Public Health course in India way back in 1996 to non-medical students also with due emphasis to health sciences like health management, health economics, gender, ethics, etc. It took almost a decade for Public Health Foundation of India to start similar public health schools in India in 2006. Still, public health schools in India are not really multidisciplinary. They totally refrain from anything that is technology. To address this gap, our institute has pioneered to start a module on public health technologies in our MPH curriculum. After years of action research in our field practice area on socio-technical linkages. In this module, we teach the basics of public health informatics, use of GAs in public health, use and potential of telemedicine applications in public health, etc. We use only open source software resources in this course, fully adhering to the cardinal dictum of public health of sharing resources without any strings. Emphasis is given to the wider social, interpersonal and ethical dimensions of introduction of technology into the society and ways and means to assess public health technologies in its various stages of development and adoption. The completed and ongoing activities in our field practice area will serve as the background work for the proposed EWARDS pilot. The Vigilant Community Advisory Board in the area oversees all field activities that are led and governed by panchayats, that is the elected local self-government bodies. We have engaged a group of 230 local women who are trained and empowered to take up socio-political challenges. It was them who have undertaken the geo-mapping and socio-demographic documentation of entire households in the area. We are proud to state that in the process, some of them got elected as Panjayat members. This shows DHIS2, an open source initiative of his international under the auspices of the informatics department of Oslo University. Norway. It was customized for Indian contest in our field practice area and afterwards it was scaled up in a phase manner, first installed in all health centers in Trivandrum and later to all health centers in the entire state covering more than a thousand centers. Now it runs in 18 other states and got shortlisted as a standard WHO package. The initial field testing of this which required extra efforts on the part of government health workers was successful only because of the good liaison we had with the various stakeholders in the community. Under this routine health management information system initiative, we emphasize on the use of information by various health functionaries starting from field level workers to the district level authorities. Simple GAS interface is created to encourage them to use data for inference to give them confidence in analyzing their own data. However, we haven't achieved much in this direction. We still have to go a long way to achieve this. This is part of our georeference field practice area where we plan to do piloting of EWARDS, the early warning and automated response system. We plan to provide 
customized tablet PCs to government field health workers in the area. The picture shown is a prototype presented by DSK Digital Technologies India. We haven't finalized the product. We are looking forward to one with the biometric sensors, video conferencing facilities, GPS and GPRS so that health workers would be able to report infectious diseases on a real-time basis and provide follow-up care for non-communicable diseases. This would be a real add-on to our community-based health surveillance. Presently, we are having many dengue fever cases in Kerala. However, complete source reduction as a EDS mosquito control measure is not practical in Kerala due to the peculiar climatic and habituation pattern. We have frequent rains and each household prefers to keep a courtyard of their own or to have at least a couple of banana trees in the household which is sufficient for Aedes mosquitoes to breed given the frequency of rains here. So we are piloting on a community based vector surveillance strategy using black jar ovi traps to monitor Aedes mosquitoes. The black jar ovi traps will be kept by women volunteers who would be undertaking a syndromic surveillance of fever cases in a cluster of 10 households around each ovitrap using a simple algorithm. This can also help in the piloting of awards in the area. So in nutshell, we plan to explore the potential of technological options to address many of the age-old public health issues in the country. Our familiarity and background work in the field practice area could be fruitfully used for customizing awards design for India. Our prior successful experiences of upscaling from local pilots to national level shall help us in this endeavor as well. Thank you for your time. We look forward to your valuable suggestions and comments.